happy Tuesday. Thanks for coming to another uh, craft night with friends here. So, all right, we are continuing on the embroidery of the month. This is our butterfly embroidery. We finished the blanket stitch around the wings. I think it looks kind of awesome just as a black outline like this. I think it's just looking really fun. Uh, so we did that. We're going to work on the text and start all the colorful insides tonight. So thanks for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together here for about an hour. All right, let's get going on the design. I have my pattern up on the iPad, and uh, let's just get going. All right, so again, I have my PDF pattern here. Uh, the PDF pattern comes with the bundle. You can also get it separately. Um, sometimes I'll print it out just to have it nearby, but other times I just, you know, I just need it for uh, the colors and what stitches to use. So I just kind of have it open on this page here. So I'm gonna have that open tonight. Oh, Gretchen's just finishing up her outline to the blanket stitch, awesome. All right, so I'm gonna come down here. I got my colors right here. I got my little thread conditioner. We'll play around with that again tonight. You don't need a thread conditioner, but this one in particular smells just so good. <laughs> so I like having it just open and around kind of like a candle. Um, so I'll run my thread through the conditioner and that's just adding, uh, it's, it's like beeswax basically. So that's just gonna add uh, some strength to it and it's gonna hold the fibers together a little bit. I think it just smells good. Uh, I got my needle, a little needle minder here. That's just a magnet. You can put that on your piece, but I just have it nearby. So I always know where my needle is. Little scissors, floss, and uh, I already have it in the hoop here from last night. So, all right, let's get down to it. Always need a sound effect, right? Okay, oh, Kimberly, I'm so happy you're here. Uh, Kimberly says it's her second night here. That's awesome. Um, oh, <laughs> Amy skipped ahead <laughs> and did the words already. So, uh, I'm kind of really itching to get onto the insides here, but we did all this black and this is the only black that's left. So I figured, eh, might as well do this. So just to kind of regroup on what we're doing here. Uh, well, this is all a blanket stitch. So you can see that up up close. I think that just adds a lot of really nice texture. It also allowed us to finish this outline so quickly. We did all this in one night and we did an outline, a black outline of the butterfly. That will not stay just black because all of the stitches or most of the stitches within the butterfly and, and the text down here, it's gonna be a whipped back stitch, and we have not done that here before. I, I demoed it uh, a little while ago, but that's that's it. Um, but for a whipped back stitch, you start with a back stitch. So we are doing all of our back stitches first. I'm gonna just show you on the pattern here. Uh, if you do all the back stitches first, you will end up with something that looks like this. It'll be black and everything on the inside will be that pretty monarch orange color. We have a little bit of satin stitch, those little circles there, but everything else would be that nice orange. Uh, so you can stop there if you want, just with the back stitches. However, if you do the whipped back stitch, then it'll be more like this, which I think it makes this look kind of almost iridescent. So if we look close at it, a whipped back stitch this is like our black back stitch, but then we whip um, this color around it. And you could do the same color. You could do black again. It just gives it a little different texture. But by doing a different color, it almost looks like baker's twine. So here, this was all orange, but then we whipped some yellow around some parts and some pink around other parts. Look at the body, we, we put that blue around. So it gives a totally different effect. So through this process, you're gonna see both parts. You're gonna see it just with a nice monarch orange. Um, and then we can look at both of them together. Um, both would be fine as finished pieces, but then we'll also go do the whipped part. So we're gonna do all the backstitching first um, instead of doing the whipped backstitch all at once. Okay, so let's uh, find more black. Here we are. Uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna... I guess I don't really need too much more of this. I'm still gonna cut a decent... Like, my, my normal, like, two feet, like, 24 inches or so. Because there's actually probably a lot to cover with this fly. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm stitching with three strands of floss for this embroidery. That's that's kind of my go-to. Lately, I've been doing two strands a lot, which will give you a little thinner line than three strands, because um, there's one less thread in there, so it'll, it'll be a little thinner. Uh, but with two strands, we can do a different way to start that is really fun and easy. So I've been uh, called the loop method. So I've been using two strands a lot lately. But for this, I'm going back to the three strands. And to start the three strands, I don't like starting with... I don't like having knots on the back of my embroidery because my thread keeps catching on it then and it can make a messy back. And sometimes it's just not as secure uh, as weaving in the ends. I'm just trying to match up these these threads here. So I like, I like weaving in my ends instead of having a knot, but when you don't, um, so there's a couple techniques to do that, and uh, when you don't have um, anything nearby to weave into, like you, you saw me like weave into the ends in the back here to start like a next, another piece of thread, I just weave, I just wove into something that was already there. But in this case, there's nothing really around this text uh, like, I'd have to weave in the end here, and then I'd have to jump down here. I could jump to here. But any jump, you're going to see this black floss on the back. On the back of... You're going to see the floss that's on the back. You're going to see it on the front. And, and just, like, through the fabric. And I, I don't really want that. So I'm going to start um, with an away knot. And an away knot is basically a tool to reserve a piece of floss to, to weave in later. So how we do that is I'm just going to tie a knot. This will all make sense as we go, uh, but just know we are doing something weird up front here, and it's called an away knot. It'll reserve some thread for us. So I'm going to start stitching uh, my back stitch right at the beginning here. Uh, so I need to go like four inches away uh, and not in the area that I'm going to stitch. So I'm going to go about right here. So I'm going from front to back, which I know is a little odd. That's maybe a little too far away. We'll go like right there. And uh, I'll pull it through and then my knot will be right there. Oh, Jennifer, is anyone else having that trouble? Like, do I sound super weird or am I jittery? It might just be your, um, I haven't seen anyone else say anything, so I would just, um, go out and come back in and see if that, that helps, Jennifer. Okay, so, uh, now I'm gonna just start, so I'm gonna forget about that for now, and let's just start our back stitch along this line here. Um, so that's, that's gonna be my start, but see, you can see the line through, that's what I didn't want happening, like, jumping to here, but, so this is this piece right here. We are reserving that for later, um, where uh, we'll we'll do that. We'll weave that in later, and I'll show you that later. Okay. So Teresa says we're good. Sounds good. Nora says we're good here. Okay. So Jennifer, I think that it's probably probably on your end tonight. Uh, all right. A little back stitch here. I'm not gonna actually. I remember I loosened this up a little bit to do those blanket stitches. I'm gonna just kind of tightened up again. For back stitch, I like to do the stabbing method where I go all the way down with my needle and then come all the way back up. And for that, I like I like my fabric a little more tight in in the hoop. Stasia. Okay, good. So sounds clear on YouTube and Facebook. Good. Good, good, good. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. You never know. Sometimes, you know, sometimes things just go awry here. So good. Glad it's working. I think you guys are going to really like how this looks without doing any of the whipped part of the whipped backstitch at all. I just, it, it's so fun to stitch it without that. 
and then just see like the it's a nice place to end like it's a pretty monarch butterfly um, with pretty colors that uh, it's just nice but that little whipped part of it just adds some sparkle to it I think I have never done that stitch in a design before uh, it came up two months ago when we were stitching the herb bouquet embroidery of the month March's embroidery of the month and someone mentioned that they were doing a whip back stitch so I kind of did a little demo so so you could see what we're talking about and it got me thinking man it'd be fun to do a whole design that was just this whipped back stitch and that's that's what sparked spark this guy so if you got ideas spin them out because you never know if uh, <laughs> we'll end up kind of like morphing that into a future design or something so I guess I haven't really gone through the back stitch here you're basically you're ultimately moving forward along you know your chosen path but you're doing it by going a stitch forward and then going backwards to your last stitch there so now here I'm gonna go a stitch forward on the line but to actually make the stitch I gotta go backwards and I'm going right in that exact same hole again I might actually need a whole nother piece of floss I'm thinking this isn't gonna get me that far there's a lot of a lot of surface area in this text here oh I think I'm stuck on a fuzzle oh Kathy says now it's not playing on Facebook Oh, interesting. Um, I'm not getting any warnings or any indication of that on on my side. Ugh. So, but it sounds like maybe some other people are having issues too. So we are on we are on YouTube as well, at Penguin and Fish Movies, or you can just do a search for Penguin and Fish, and we should pop up. Um, yeah, Gretchen says her Facebook is just fine. It sounds like a couple people are having issues. So yeah, if one doesn't work, you can always pop on over to the to the other. <laughs> Amy, I that is on my brain. Amy, <laughs> Amy's been asking uh, us to uh, like uh, to do a pin cushion design. Um, that that definitely is noodling around in my brain yet. If you have a a pattern that you like or a style that you like. Um, for a pincushion, like a fabric-y pincushion. Like I know they're like fun and like, like I love the ones that are in like vintage cups or like, you know, you can get like some cute mugs at the thrift store and then you uh, make, do like fabric over the top of that and put some stuffing in. Uh, I think those are freaking adorable. Um, <laughs> Amy says I'll keep trying so if there's if there's a style and then there's some that are just like a little mini pillow that are filled with like I don't know walnut kernels or whatever shells uh, there's some like that but yeah if there's a style you like um, yeah go ahead and post post it in the penguin and fish crafters group on Facebook and never know maybe we will we will do something but I have been thinking about it, like a way we could we could do that. Because really, yeah, I mean, you could do like a butterfly like this and then just do cut out another piece of fabric for a back fabric. And then you could just fill it with, um, I know, I think like, isn't walnut shells something that people like? Like, um, like putting in those I think it kind of sharpens the pins and stuff at the same time or that's the theory at least anyway that'd be an option or just some stuffing but yeah it could just be like a heavy stuffed like bean bay really that we embroider on on one side you know what that sounds like a fun finish it Friday project that would be neat to do like to take one of these embroideries and and turn it into 
something like that at some point. Maybe I can put some bundles or something together, like, of, of the walnut shells. Uh, get some of those bulk somewhere, and then, and then have, like, just enough. Versus having to look to where to find walnut sh shells, we can just have it all in the shop. Um, yeah, maybe we try something like that. That'd be kind of fun. Oh, makes them shiny, maybe. Oh, that's a good point, Sylvia. Maybe that's how the the walnut shells help, too. Yeah. Yeah, maybe helps them from, like, tarnishing or something, too. Maybe the oils in walnut shells help. Oh, Amy says, yes, I use walnut shells. That's so funny. Like, I pull that out of my, I don't know, the nether regions of my brain. <laughs> I, I feel like I haven't. I feel like um, that's, like, a tidbit of information that just got stored somewhere that that's walnut shells that go in there because I don't feel like I've thought about stuffing those specifically <laughs> but that that popped in my head of like oh walnut shells oh those funny little bits of of in info good question Gretchen Gretchen's asking why not pecan shells I have no idea oh <laughs> Speaking of pecans, I say pecans, uh, but I know people say pecan and pecan. Pecan, pecan, pecan. I'm curious how you guys say pecan. <laughs> pecan pie, that's, that's how I say it. Oh, interesting. So Jolyn is saying that reptile bedding is cheaper because they use walnut shells for reptile bedding. Huh. That's interesting. I love that sort of stuff, like where like industries cross over like that. Reptile bedding. Huh. I bet your reptiles like that, then they can scratch off all their skin or whatever oh nice okay Amy says the Zilla reptile terrarium bedding substrate desert blend walnut five quart <laughs> perfect yeah yeah I mean that'd be fun like I'm totally open to uh, we could do it like an embroidered basically beanbag sack um and fill it with some of that. Yeah, I could I could get some of that and then like just, you know, do kits where it's like just enough of that maybe. Oh, that's a good idea. Sylvia says, have you seen that sack that hangs on the table edge with a pin cushion at the top? That'd be kind of a fun little project. Yeah, I have seen that. So that's like, people use them as like a garbage, like for scraps, but it's like a bean bag basically, right? That, um, and then it has like a bag hanging from it. So the bag will hang off the table and then the bean bag's on the table and you know, the bean bag's what's holding the bag up, but then people like put it by their sewing machine and put, um, you know, their fuzzles in there. So uh, that could be fun. That'd be a neat idea. I like that, that sounds, that whole idea sounds like it'd be a fun, like, last week of the month sort of thing. Because we've been kind of leaving that last week um, kind of open for projects. Probably won't do it next week, but because I don't have anything prepared for that. But that would be maybe a fun thing next month or something. I know I have some older embroideries around here or maybe we do like a small embroidery and then turn it into that I don't know but I like I like the thinking I like I like the idea of this for sure I'll have to think through it a little bit more yet gather some supplies oh that's a fun idea so Amy's saying um, some alternatives to the the walnut shells like if you're allergic you can use the plastic beads I might have some of those around here from a zillion years ago. I have to dig through my craft supplies for those, but I know exactly what you're talking about. And I like this idea, a wool dryer ball for round ones. So you could do a, a, like a round pincushion and 
stick one of those wool dryer balls in there. That's kind of neat. All right, so I ran out of floss. So <laughs> I still have a little bit left to do here. Um, but I'm going to take care of this while I'm at it. Let's uh, cut off that knot from earlier. So that's garbage. We don't need that knot. But I've released, by cutting that knot away, I've released our like store of extra floss here. So that was from doing that away knot earlier. And what that's going to allow me to do is now weave in this end. I know it, it seems like we're wasting a ton of th thread at the get-go, but we're also not having a knot there. So nothing's going to catch on to that knot, uh, like nothing's going to get caught on it or whatever, and um, it won't like loosen on itself later if this goes through the wash a zillion times or something. Uh, so we're avoiding a lot with just like wasting, you know, you know, two more inches of floss or whatever. And we have like that perfect clean back. And again, I'm not going to do the way not now. I'm just going to weave into what's already there. So let's, let's just get my second piece here. We'll do it without the stabilizer or without the, um, thread conditioner this time just to get going. But now since I have, I have backs of stitches to weave in now. Um, I didn't at the beginning here, right? I'd have to jump from somewhere up here. But now I have stitches, so I don't have to do that away not again. I can just weave in the ends to what's already there. Ooh, I think I made myself a little twisted knot. There, I got it. There, so now this is hardly wasting more than a knot. Weaving it back and forth three times to secure it. And then we're ready. Let's finish up this feller. Ooh, man, this back stitching though is taking so much more time than the blanket stitches that we did on the outside there. Man, we cruised through all of those so quickly. So I'm just thinking, what should we do next? I, I kind of want to maybe just continue. Continue. Ooh, I'm stuck here. Ah, that fuzzle was going to get in my way at some point here. Let's cut that off. I think I want to just continue with back stitches tonight. So we'll start all the orange back stitching that's in here. Uh, and then we still have these satin stitched circles to do so maybe we'll we'll back stitch tonight and then maybe tomorrow we'll sneak in those satin stitch circles and then do some more back stitching but like I said I'm gonna back stitch the whole thing first before doing the whipped back stitch now you don't have to do that you could go ahead and do the whipped stitching right away like you could just like I could do it right on this fly part right away if I if I wanted but um, I kind of like, I, I want to show you guys the look of it if you didn't do any of it, because it totally, I think, works if you don't do any of that whipped back stitching. So I just want to show you guys that, because I think it's kind of pretty too. Jennifer, I think a few people are... Um, not everyone, but I think a few people are having some trouble with the Facebook um, tonight. Yeah, if anyone's having trouble over on Facebook tonight def with the broadcast, definitely um, ugh, chalk it up to Facebook, and hopefully it's better tomorrow, but um, you can hop on over to the YouTube Oh yeah, Amy, I'm, I'm with you on that. Amy said that she's heard of people putting rice in the uh, pin cushions that they make, but she's wary of using that because, you know, if it gets humid, then, I don't know, rice might freak out and, I don't know, it gets real, real, real humid here. So um, that would kind of make me nervous too. All right, I think we got two more stitches here and we're done with the black floss for this project so that's nice 
Okay, let's weave in that end. And we're good to go with the, the black. I can set that aside. Okay, I have a lot of, a lot of it left over. All right, next up, I think we're gonna jump into, uh, like I said, more backstitching. So everything else except for these circles are backstitched with this orange. So this is our tiger lily color. It's just like, I think it worked perfectly for that monarch, um, monarch color, just like bright, pretty orange. Uh, so it's all getting a cover of that, except like I said, the, um, the satin stitches, these circles are going to get this garden rose color. Um, but yeah, so it's going to get this color before we, we whip around with these two colors. And this black is going to get this blue whipped around it. But like I said, we're going to start with just the back stitches, just because I think it's pretty like that. And uh, let's get another 24 inches or so out of here. I'm gonna continue with the three strands. Oh, hey, Nolene, hope you're feeling gradually better here. Ugh, this tiger lily color is so just bright and pretty. You know, we had that floss cone sale and uh, um, we had one cone that was uh, a similar color to this, like a DMC sort of version of this color. Uh, and I was secretly hoping that no one would buy that one <laughs> so I could keep, keep this bright, pretty orange color, but uh, someone got that one, so. I'll have to stick to the cute little skeins of it. So fun to see on a big cone though. All the pretty colors. Yeah. Well, I didn't put it through the um, conditioner again, so oh well. So I, I do have stitches to weave in now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna weave into the backs of these. I think I'm gonna start I don't know. I guess I'm just gonna start with the outline. Let's just do that. Yeah, I mean, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's gotta get stitched one way or the other, so let's just start with um, with that background outline. Let's start stitching from the top. It's all gotta get filled in, so it doesn't really matter where you start, I suppose. And this is gonna take a bunch of thread, I'm thinking, too. A lot of surface area to cover here as well. Okay, so more back stitches, and I'm gonna try and uh, go over these um, blanket stitch areas. I'm gonna try and not go in the exact same hole because then then my back stitches will look like it. They're in front of in front of um, those a little bit, like it's covering up covering up the point where that black meets. I think that's kind of nice. So again, I'm just kind of rotating the piece so it feels comfortable in my hand. I like I like being able to hold the hoop and being able to feel the stitches with my left hand. So I'm always touching the needle as it comes through and, and all that. So that's why sometimes I'm not like at a front angle here. Like I'm gonna go all the way upside down now. A little bit different than if you're using like an embroidery stand. In that case, you'd probably just leave it upright and you don't actually have to hold on to it to have your hand back there to feel the stitches. So the stand's doing it for you. Whoa! Arm got in the way, flung my needle out.
this is where you can just start relaxing. Ugh, but this orange looks so pretty with the, the black. Although I did kind of like this all black. Like, this would be neat as, like, a single color design. Oh, we should, um... A few people are saying how it, they wish they could, uh draw so they could do some fun designs like this I, I it would be uh, I would love to do like a little kind of drawing class or something at some point uh here I think that would be like super duper fun we could do like a whole a whole week of it or something maybe I'd have to really plan <laughs> figure figure out how oh, like what we would do for that but um I do think that it's accomplishable for sure and it turns something into an embroidery pattern. I mean, you know, we're just following some outlines here. So if you get a, a decent outline, then you're you're good to go, right? But yeah, we could definitely do a little drawing course. That'd be kind of fun. I've painted on here once or twice a zillion years ago. Uh, that that'd be fun to do again too. Just I'm still kind of trying to get comfortable here. Sounds like a few people would be interested in in a drawing thing. That'd be cool. Oh, that's funny. You're right, Amy. That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> Amy said, "Jeez, this is just funny to say out loud. You did a really good. You did really good teaching us how to draw a toilet paper roll." <laughs> uh, that's right. So uh, this, uh, some of you might remember, but. When uh, this whole COVID deal started and we were all in lockdown and everyone was buying all the toilet paper from everywhere, uh, we did that that little free um, squirrel design. Um, the little squirrel that I did, and the squirrel was holding holding like a an acorn or something, and we. I showed you guys how to take out the acorn and how to draw a toilet paper roll. So, so, um, so the squirrel was holding a toilet paper roll. <laughs> Ugh, that was kind of funny. So we could do something like that. I think it might be fun to do like in, like, If we're gonna do like some like some drawing, it would be fun to do like an observational drawing thing. Like we could have a little setup, and we could you know just look at how you would look at it to draw it, and and things to just like helpful ways to draw like something that you're actually like looking at in real life, like you know flowers or something. Uh, but then it'd be neat to like how to make a, an embroidery pattern from like a photograph or something. Um, that would be kind of a fun, fun deal too. There's definitely tons of opportunities to make your own embroidery patterns, however you want, especially, you know, if you're using like stick and stitch, uh, you know, then you don't even need like a computer or anything. You can just, get some paper, get the design how you want it after like, you know, tracing, doing a few things and stuff. And then uh, once you have something that you like, tracing it onto that stick and stitch and then you're, then you're ready. Yeah, that would be a really good, um, another one of these good projects for like our last week of the, of the month. Um, you know, we have a project 
for each week and then this year we've been leaving that last week kind of open for fun ideas like this. Oh, Luann, that's a, that's a bummer. Take a break. They'll be ready to draw tomorrow. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. Maybe we do a little Chad portrait or something. Chad the kitty. <laughs> or whatever other, uh, whatever other thing. I think, uh, I, uh, I, I like this. I like this idea. I like the the um, pin cushion idea too, for sure. Um, both of those are gonna take some wrapping my brain around it a little bit, like how we would do that. But I do like it. Oh, interesting. Nolene Cena was saying I was watching a TV, watching TV really late one night, and they had a new drawing class on for two hours with models. Oh, that is so interesting that's what a neat opportunity that really is um great so we did a ton of um a ton of um figure drawing in school so i went to art school if, if you guys didn't know i went to art school did the whole the works of the art school like all the foundational courses that you know are all the observation drawing and uh you know, working in different mediums and the figure drawing with, with nude models and that sort of thing. And man, uh, it's wonderful if you can have an opportunity like that. And even, you know, just on TV, like with them flat like that. I think, you know, people have been doing like zooms of that and stuff. There's a, there's a, um, where I used to go to school, they have like a, they had a program or something. I don't know if they're still doing it where, like every or a couple Wednesdays a month or something, they'd have a drawing session and you could just go there um, and they, they'd have a model there. Anyway, it's, it's great. If you have the opportunity to take a drawing class like that, a, a live drawing class with a teacher in person, it's, it's um, I, I just, I really love it. One of the big things I think with that is to just acknowledge that this is where you're at <laughs> and things might look crazy, but every little step is a place to learn and consider and, and get better at it. it. It's, it is really fun. And it's one of those things this is how graphic design is too something that it just is going to look crazy until, until all of a sudden it doesn't and it looks awesome. And it's just kind of like there's a whole world of it not looking good until all of a sudden it does. So I think the biggest, one of the biggest things I can say about if you're, you know, wanting to learn to draw or something like that, give yourself a whole pile of grace and know that if you keep doing it and keep trying to apply some of these, you know, tips and stuff, uh, it'll, it'll get better. And it's, you know, it's a learnable skill. So, um, for sure. But yeah, that'd be fun. I would love to do some little things like that here. I will let that simmer in my brain and think of how, um, like a good process of how we might go about that. Ugh, I was hoping I could get all the way around here. Uh, I was, I'm actually like surprised I got this far, but now that I'm this far, I'm hoping I could get to there, but I, I don't think, I don't think I got enough for that. I'm going to have to get like one tiny stitch in here. Ugh, that's going to be annoying to just have like one. Yeah, it's going to be more than one. Four stitches that I'm going to have to come back to. Oh, well. I hate when my path gets diverted and I got to, like, I don't know. I always like when I can map it out and not have to, like, leap it all anywhere else. It's just, like, a perfect little line of 
connected lines, but it's not gonna happen this time. Oh my god, I'm gonna just live, literally have like one stitch left. This is definitely three stitches worth. Ah, I just can't do it, I don't think. I might be able to go forward a stitch and then backwards a stitch. Oh my god, I'm gonna just do it. I'm not gonna have any, any thread to weave in though. Oh, thread chicken, you're just playing with me tonight. All right, well, technically we did it. <laughs> this is going to be the trick, though, here, is I have hardly any thread to weave in, but I think we'll get at least one pass. Then we might have to do the backwards weaving. Oh, if I can get another pass through. Uh, no. Okay, so this is a mom suggestion if your thread is... You don't have quite enough to weave in. Try going backwards, like with the, oops, geez, with the eye of the needle first. So I'm gonna weave in with the eye of the needle. It'll kind of, it'll come off of the needle, like, you know, it'll come all the way out here. There we go, like that. But I can get a third pass by going through the eye of the needle again. And I'm probably fine with the two passes, but just to get that third one going in with the eye of the needle again. Heh <laughs> heh! Take that, thread chicken. <laughs> thread chicken is when we uh, when we're playing chicken with the end of the row. Like, is the end of the row gonna win or is my thread gonna win? We won that time, ha <laughs> ha. All right, the back's looking really nice still here. All right, and I think we definitely have time for a whole nother thread. So let's see. Now I'm gonna map this out a little bit. Let's, um, I think let's start here. I think this kind of goes to here. And then let's, then we'll jump and do this bit. And I think we'll have some left over. So at that point, I think we just go in the backs of these stitches just to jump over to this side and then we start this outline again and I don't know if we'll get that whole uh, I'm pretty sure we're not gonna get that whole outline but we'll get far okay I think that's a decent plan so we'll have at least one wing done of the orange still have that satin stitch to go yet man now that I'm doing all this back stitching I'm thinking we actually got kind of a lot to do on this yet. Um, I'm hoping we can still get this done by Friday. Man, last night I was like, dang, we're gonna have Friday free. <laughs> Just because that blanket stitch went so fast, but now this back stitching, this is taking, taking more time for sure. Um, but yeah, so if we don't actually finish on Friday, uh, we'll have the next week free so we could, we could finish it up then. Totally changed my tune from last night. But actually, we're we're getting a ways done. We did all this today too. The the um, fly. So maybe I'm getting more done here than I. My brain's telling me. I don't know. Yeah, actually the whipped part is gonna go really quickly like the um, like how fast the blanket stitch went. So maybe we're we're on we're on task still, I think. Oh Linda, that'd be cute. Linda says, how about a stuffed penguin pincushion holding a fish? <laughs> that'd be cute. Oh, Marie, um, I'm glad you feel better. Yeah, they, I'm, I'm happy you're liking how this is looking. Like, I, I'm, I really do love this with just the black and orange. I think it's going to be really kind of fun. Uh, like, and you could just stop at that point again, but I think this little whipped part of it is going to add a little bit of fun to it for sure. All right, so I'm gonna kind of jump to the end here. 
I'm okay with jumping there because um, these next, it's going to be basically, you won't see that jump because I'm basically covering it up with these stitches, these next stitches. Just adjusting here again. I wonder if I should have gone one more. I think we're fine right there. Getting this last little blip de bloop. Oh, these are your high school colors? That's funny, Luann. I think one of our schools, no, they were yellow and black. I was like, I think one of our junior highs was this color. They're yellow and black. I feel like I'm turning a lot tonight. Uh, like, I, like my hand, my left hand, which likes feeling the stitches, just isn't quite finding a spot that it likes to be in. Ugh, it's looking fun though with orange who Jenna just uh, finished up um, stitching next month's embroidery of the month and she showed it to me today and it's looking so nice so I'm, I'm super stoked for June's embroidery of the month and dang, that's coming up like so quickly here. That embroidery of the month will accompany a new website. So uh, we're, we're busy working on that still too. Yeah, we're definitely going to have some more thread, so I'm going to jump around to the other side and we'll start that outline. And then, you know, then we'll end up with these guys down here. I think this is a two stitch gap. All right, so there's the one wing. Uh, I think now, like I said, I'm gonna travel in the back of this butterfly thorax there, and then I'm gonna start on the outline, um, like this big orange outline on this side. I got half my thread still or so yet. So I'm just going to cross over here. There we go, just so you don't see the jump in the middle of the body. And we'll start down here. Work our way around to the top. Yeah, I just can't get comfortable. There we go. That's that feels right. Our colors. Let's see. I think my my junior high colors were the same as the as my high school color so high school was like a red white and black basically um, but the red was kind of like a 
deep red, not like a bright red. Like more of like a brick red or something. Less of a fire engine red. And then we had three junior highs and mine was I think just red again, red and black. And then there was a green one and a I think green and white and then a yellow and black junior high and I think I think our elementary school might have been yellow or something yellow and black but I don't I'm not, not sure about that parents they went to the same high school I think theirs might have been blue and gold although I'm not positive on that I'll have to ask <laughs> now I'm curious but my, I don't know why that would be in my head that that's what they would be so if I'm way far off <laughs> then I don't know where that came from in my head uh, maybe it's blue and white blue and white maybe Oh, Christy says all three of her universities, coincidentally, were yellow and black. Oh, that's funny. Someone's got to just make those decisions. I wonder how the, some, someone's, you know, got to do that. This is getting a little twisted, so I'm just letting it dangle for a sec here. Like a superintendent or somebody. or some committee. It's probably some committee and they vote on it or whatever. Alright, so I think we'll go tonight till I finish this thread. Which is pretty soon. We're getting close here. And now I'm kind of tempted just to finish all the orange before going over to the to those um pink satin stitches. I was thinking, oh, we can quick do those satin stitches first for a little, but I think I think we will. We'll just finish this orange because now now I feel like I'm invested in in the orange, finishing it all up. Oh, really? Christy says, and then they trademark the specific colors. It's so weird. I when you know, as I was starting to talk about it, I'm like, dang, that's some buddy's master thesis is like. <laughs> Uh, you know, s the studying of like how all that's determined and I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking those institutions like that have some weird goings on to figure that stuff out. All right, we're getting there. I'm reaching my comfort limit on how much floss I have here. I think this might be the last stitch. Then we'll weave in the end. Yeah, this is the last one. Which is fine, because tomorrow I'll like, maybe I'll finish this here and then we'll kind of, yeah, bump out and do the rest of these somehow. I haven't mapped that out yet. Blanket stitches almost look like little black whiskers on the back here. 
kind of fun. Okay. And there we are. Back's looking nice still. And there we are on the front. But there you can kind of see, you can see the difference. So here's the, here's just orange, right? So this is just the back stitch without the whip. Now here's the same color back stitch, but with the whipped stitch in, in two different colors, in the pink and the yellow on top of the orange. And look at the different effect it has. You can still see the orange and everything in there, but man, it, it changes the color a bit, doesn't it? So I just think that's kind of fun. It's just a neat little um, bit of that whipped backstitch. All right. Okay, so that's good. We are uh, on our way. I feel better now. I feel like when I when we start stitching these back stitches, I'm like, this is gonna take forever yet. But uh, I feel good where we left it here today. I definitely think we'll we'll get it done on Friday for sure. Now again, maybe maybe even earlier. <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling good about it, but yeah, we got our first bits of color in today. Got that fly done. Uh, yeah, we're in a good spot, and I'm enjoying it, which is nice. And it's just fun to hang out with all of y'all too. So, all right. Oh, uh, YouTube seems to be messing up now too. Shirley says, okay. So, yep, mine just cut out here, too, so <laughs> good time to end, I suppose. So uh, both uh, are being a little sketchy tonight, uh, Facebook and, and YouTube. So anyway, thanks again, everyone. Hopefully it's all going to work out tomorrow just fine. I'm just checking your comments over here. Uh, but awesome. So thank you guys again. Uh, we'll continue this uh, tomorrow at 8.30 Central, 8.30 p.m. Central time. So have a good evening, and I'll see you then. Good night.